I thought I'd make a, a few comments before I get into the slides. Um, I'm a cell biologist by education, and all the things that I've been able to do in my career, I still consider myself a cell biologist. And when I first had the opportunity to work in process development, one of the early things that I realized is that when you combine disciplines like biology and engineering, you can have outcomes that are greater than the sum of their parts. And I really like that um, convergent discipline workplace. So um, I worked at Amgen for about 20 years and I developed processes for all sorts of modalities. And then about three years ago, I joined Allogen. And what I've learned in that time is there's huge convergence um, of multiple disciplines requir required to make progress in all of our fields. Um, cell biology, molecular biology, virology, immunology, and engineering. And I think it is the most technically difficult, but the most engaging biology that I've ever been involved in, and, and that's a privilege. Um, so I think that at this meeting, we're all doing things that have never been done before. And I think we all know that um, biology is not a perfectly predicted science. And sometimes it reveals itself in ways that are very designed and, and sometimes in unexpected ways. Um, at Allogene, in the last couple of weeks, um, we had biology show itself in an unexpected way, but actually it doesn't make it any less engaging or less interesting. It's fascinating biology. And um, at Allogene, we're going to be working really hard across all of our disciplines to try and elucidate what's happening there. Um, I hope you'll respect the fact that I can't talk about the details of the hold. It's very fresh. Um, and uh, when we can, we'll try and be as transparent as possible. So what I had prepared uh, for this presentation today, uh, I am the CTO, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, CMC. This is our safe harbor statement. So a little bit about Allogene, in case you're not familiar. It has been approximately three years since our inception. I feel really proud. We've made so much progress in that time, and we have five open INDs. Um, we're very fortunate to have a very healthy cash balance. And in terms of allogeneic therapy, um, we have dosed um, well over 100 patients. And our singular focus is trying to understand a way to um, elucidate allogeneic cell therapy. We have a platform that we're currently working with. Obviously, we are using the fantastic um, development biology that was um, created by the autologous field with respect to transducing chimeric antigen receptors. But in addition, we are um, doing gene deletions. Um, I think that Allogene and uh, many of our industry colleagues have now demonstrated that the deletion of the T cell receptor gene seems to address graft versus host disease very effectively. And then the Allogene platform in particular then uh, attempts to address, address graft rejection by the deletion of CD52, and then the co-administration of an anti-CD52 monoclonal antibody. So that means that the host lymphocytes are deleted temporarily, and um, the graft lymphocytes um, have a period of stealth um, to go about their business. We have um, a growing pipeline um, we have the well-validated targets of CD19 and BCMA, um, but we have also just started um, a trial uh, with an anti-CD50 target in renal cell carcinoma. It's very early and looks super interesting. 
Um, you'll note on this slide all of these programs are currently on hold. In terms of what have we learned so far um, in the clinic, um, the data that is summarized on this slide is uh, the same data that you might have seen at ASCO. So for um, ALO501, which is our CD19 allogeneic CAR-T product, we had um, overall response rates and complete response rates of 75 and 50% respectively. And uh, we discussed the fact that we had 36% durability uh, with a six-month follow-up. Um, importantly, I think, in the allogeneic space, um, we're comparing intent to treat with modified intent to treat um, to try and show that we can try and treat almost every patient who needs treatment. And the average time to treatment is five days. The safety profile uh, looks very good. And um, we're excited to follow up with consolidation dosing, which has been rapidly underway until last week. So that is the um, status of our clinical data so far. I, I'm not going to talk about the other programs. Instead, um, I'd like to uh, say a few things about the CMC strategy for the company. So a really great thing for me as a CTO is that um, our company founders wanted to contemplate CMC strategy right out of the gate. So that is definitely a bet. It costs money. Um, however, I think the upside is very important. So right from the start, um, we decided that we wanted to build our own manufacturing capability, um, to have control over that, to learn from inside uh, the manufacturing organization, and especially with respect to testing, and also to have control over the regulatory environment and uh, the state of compliance. Um, so we set about building a facility that would be suitable for uh, commercial approval. Um, so a few things um, that we've been building right from the start, identifying a platform that can allow us to move as easily as possible from our um, third party providers to our internal manufacturing capability making sure that I built a very strong supply chain organization. Um, I have in my past managed a $3 billion supply chain organization and I can tell you in this field, you need just as good practitioners <laughs> to manage the supply chain in this um, emergent small company space. Um, I don't know if any of you were at the workshop this morning, I thought it was fantastic and Picking up on something that Andy Lynn said that really resonated with me is that even though um, understanding um, our critical quality attributes is very difficult for cell and gene therapies, it is our obligation to try and determine what those are. I personally love the quality target profile tool and it's very difficult to have conversations using that tool um, for cell therapy, but nonetheless, even elucidating gaps, I think, uh, are very important and set a pathway for further method development. We are also uh, developing and manufacturing LO647, which is the anti-CD52 antibody. Um, we decided to outsource that, and I have a tiny team overseeing that. Um, so these decisions were made um, quite early, and then I think you stand a chance of um, really designing for a specific cost of goods ra manufactured rather than stumbling upon it um, later in the day. This is what our manufacturing process looks like uh, schematically. Um, we use healthy donor PBMCs. I've learned a tremendous amount about what the term healthy donor means. <laughs> um, we activate the cells, transduce them with lentiviral vector. Then we use uh, talon mRNA as the nuclease to do the gene editing. Then we expand 
and then we purify to remove any residual TCR um, positive cells. Then we have a formulation and fill operation. So this is a cartoon of roughly the same process. What's on the top is um, autologous and what's on the lower part is allogeneic. I've used this diagram to illustrate the following. Um, that when we built the plant, or when we designed the plant, I should say, we really thought about the allogeneic process flow, what's similar and what's different. Um, so we purposely designed larger suites that we could nest allogeneic production. Um, we have a very different filling area. Actually, what I, another thing that I love about this particular process development is the marriage of very new technologies, like the inclusion of molecular biology into industrialized process flows, but then also um, a more traditional looking biologics uh, filling operation. And then we had to consider um, inventory. We are inventory generating. And for example, we pipe the facility with liquid nitrogen. So we have built that facility. That's a picture of it from the outside and from the inside. Um, we've called it Cell Forge One, always looking forward. And uh, we are actively making um, GMP material. We wanted that facility to be close to our other facilities. Um, and we have process development in South San Francisco and it's about a 45 minute drive, and there is a lot of communication between both buildings. And of course, to complete the entire network, we're constantly paying attention to our external providers also. So that's a super quick rundown on um, some things that I've been working on in the last three years. The next steps at Allergene, as I mentioned at the beginning, are that we're going to be putting all of our attention to resolving um, our observations uh, that have resulted in a hold. In collaboration with the FDA, we're so anxious um, to be able to continue to treat patients. Uh, we are continuing to produce GMP material at CellForge 1, and we'll continue to execute on that allogeneic operation strategy. Thank you very much for your attention, and I might have time for a couple of questions. Thank you.